Hi guys, um, it's Vicki here. I've seen all over the boards um, yesterday, I've seen that a lot of people are concerned, um, not so much about making or injecting PRF, but um, the blood drawing part, which totally get it. Um, I find PRF to be one of the absolute easiest and probably cheapest things um, that I've done. Uh, in my skincare journey, I've done it under my eyes a couple of times. And then I did um, mezzo, some of it kind of around here. Um, and I did, uh, anytime I have leftover, I microneedle or um, either into my face, my neck, back of my hands. My hands don't look too bad for almost 48. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I do it on myself. And I'm going to give you some kind of tips and tricks, um, things I've learned along the way. I am not in any way giving you medical advice. I am licensed to do this, but I am not doing this video on my license. Please forgive my camera work. I am not a video editor. I am not a YouTuber. This is probably going to be longer than it needs to be. I also have four dogs, so you may hear a variety of dog sounds in the background while we do this, but let's get started. All right, so I have a, a clean area set up here. It is not sterile. Um, this is not a sterile process, and it just needs to be very clean and aseptic. Um, so my hands are meticulously clean. I do have gloves. Um, I don't usually wear them to draw my own blood. And I actually even take um, my rubbing alcohol right before and I kind of rub it on my fingertips with a, a gauze pad to even clean them further. Tape. You're going to need tape. You're going to need to make a dressing for yourself. Cotton balls. I like these big ones. Um, I always have two of everything to, just because I don't want to be rooting around for something when I need it. I have a butterfly needle set. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see that. This one is a 21 gauge um, by three quarter inch. So gauge is, is width, 21 is pretty small. Uh, three quarters is the length and um, it's got a 12 inch uh, extension set. You're gonna need a vacutainer um, holder. This is just a cheapo piece of plastic that's gonna screw onto one end of this and help hold your tube. The tubes, obviously. Uh, there's been a ton of talk about tubes. These, these are the ones that I use. Hopefully, uh, that's my dog, I told you it would happen. They go, they're probably protecting me from squirrels right now. This is a white top tube. It has no additives. There's nothing in it, nothing added. The other very, very important thing is there is no silica coating this um, tube on the inside. It is plain, it is uncoated, and you need to look for that. This one is nine millimeter, milliliters. Um, it fills up to about here. It's got enough of a vacuum that it's gonna pull about that much blood in. My centrifuge holds um, four of these. Uh, if you get smaller tubes, you are going to need a center centrifuge that will accommodate smaller tubes. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be trying to dig them out of these slots that are, you know, this deep, uh, but your tube's this big, and you're gonna be trying to somehow get them out of there without disturbing the, the layer of PRF that's gonna come up to the top here. So um, make sure you know what size slot your centrifuge is and um, get tubes accordingly. This is what my centrifuge looks like on the inside. Whoop, there it goes, started it up. It uh, runs with a dial. The slots in it, um, if you can see, are the right size for these tubes. See how they kind of stick up? However, when I got the centrifuge, um, it said it held 10 mil tubes, and the first ones I got were eights, and these are nines. So when I first put my first set of tubes in, the tube came exactly to the top, like just right underneath it. So getting them out, I would have had to use something to grab it. So what I did, which was, I, I thought it was a little genius, I pulled four stoppers off of, of my old tubes, threw the tubes away, and there is one of those rubber stoppers in each of these slots. Um, they're rubber, they're all the same weight, so it's going to stay balanced, and they hold that tube just high enough 
so that I can pop them right out when I need it. If you're like me, four um, of these nine mil tubes will yield about nine or 10 um, milliliters of PRF product at the end. So plenty to work with. I would say anytime you're in a vein, draw what you can. Um, you know, you can microneedle it in if you don't inject it all. You'll find all kinds of uses for it. You can do your chest, you can do your hands, your arms, whatever. It, it It's gold. You don't want to get rid of it. You're going to need syringes. These are 3cc syringes. I like to work with them. The um, These are what I use to draw the PRF out of the vial after it's spun down. This is how they came out of the package. Um, and these needles are Oh, like an inch and a half long and they're tiny they're like 30 or 32 gauge so you can't pull anything up through them I think they're fairly worthless I chuck the the needle and keep the syringe and then when I draw my PRF out of the tube I use one of these guys this is a little uh, one inch uh, 18 gauge needle 18 gauge is great for uh, more viscous products um, interestingly, these are also used um, to do pilot holes for uh, flexible cannulas. I usually get about four of these, have a couple of these handy just in case I lose one. You're going to want some um, clean, not necessarily sterile gauze pads. I just get them in a sleeve like this, really cheap. Um, the needles I get in a box, so I got a bajillion. I, I won't run out of these for a long time. Okay, uh, these are the dermal cannulas, disposable. Uh, flexible cannulas. These are expensive. Um, I use one for my whole uh, face for one session. I do not open one for each um, new pilot hole. They come with a pilot needle. That's another little 18 gauger right there. And then this particular one is a 22 gauge 50 millimeter cannula. Um, these are blunt on the end. There is a port on the side. So um, you're very unlikely to uh, get into a blood vessel with these and they are stiff enough at 22 gauges um, that they drive pretty nicely and kind of punch through those um, fibrous areas pretty easily. And I got these on eBay. Um, I think they're like six or eight bucks a piece. You can see them up to 20 bucks a piece, which to me is just bonkers. A tourniquet, clearly uh, we're gonna need. Okay, so a couple more things I wanted to show you before we get into venipuncture. I just wanted to show you um, that I have, uh, this, this is how the um, butterfly needle sets come. There, This is a pack of uh, 50, so again, it'll last me a very long time. Um, lots and lots of them in there. Um, this, this is invaluable. You must have one of these. Uh, they come in different uh, styles. This is a tube holder. So <clears throat> my tubes go in there when I'm not working with them. Especially after it's separated, you do not want your tubes tipping going over then your prf gets mixed back up and and you are back where you started and then as far as the centrifuge here i got this guy on ebay it's used uh it was an old lab centrifuge it cost me like 45 bucks shipped it is variable speed it goes from zero to 3400 all right prf spins slow prp spins faster um, but prf spins slow between um, 500 and 1,000 is what um, is recommended. And this guy just, you just kinda turn, you'll hear it just start to spin. Once it spins, I back it down to as low as it will go before stopping, and I leave it right there. So it is below 1,000, but if you don't have a digital one, you definitely need one that's got something between zero and a thousand. <clears throat> Otherwise you may have a more difficult time getting it to separate properly.